80s. I think they aspired to having no eyebrows at all. Right, I think they thought the future was going to be made up of hairless people and like sterile white environments. Oh yeah, well that was like when everything was going to be Chrome in the future too. That's yeah, now we just have an internet browser, and that's as far as that went. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Spray painting your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> future and the past. <laughs> oh, welcome to Hairless Roundtable Podcast, everybody. Oh, did I? My sponsorship finally went through. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. It's episode uh, something or other. What is this? 11, maybe? No, that's way too far behind. It's like... 16 or something? Yeah, that sounds right. Six fucking teen? 16 or 17. We're somewhere <laughs> oh in my there. Gosh. Oh, yeah. Infinity. Brian hasn't posted an episode in like 10 episodes. <laughs> so he doesn't true. know where we are. Uh, yeah, we we just record these all in bulk, actually. So we change our outfits every few hours. Yep. This has been Except for me. the same that explains recording session. the news is so old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we just try to make it up. We've been doing an okay job of predicting things. Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out next week. Woo! 2.8, come on. The true Metal Gear Solid 5 comes out last Tuesday. <laughs> I saw it online. Oh, this is episode it. 17. This is episode I 17. I should is. know that. I should Sorry. probably know that. Anyway, we're talking about Kingdom Hearts 2.8 today because that's fucking ridiculous. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the Rock Band 4 track list that was released. Super Mario Maker is out as well. It's going to be a lot of fun to discuss. And then Party Hard, which is in the exact same domain of video games as Super Mario Maker. <laughs> it's very Pretty similar. Much, yeah. yeah. NHL 16 came out. NHL yeah. 16, Madden 16, all sorts of fun and goodness happening on today's e edition episode. Uh, Dan Daniel Sabine is only rated at an 85 despite having a bounce back season last year and being in the top 10 in the league in points. I think it's bullshit. He should be at least an 86. Talk Madden oh. with me. Ra Gronkowski is the highest rated player in the game. Gronkowski is a 99. And I mean, have you, did you watch the fucking last game? He's a, <laughs> no. ma he's a man among boys, and it's the best <laughs> thing in the world. I've well, never that... seen him play football, but I did see him play Mortal Kombat 10 with Conan O'Brien and nice. Marshawn Lynch, and mm -hmm. he has a very muscular physique. He yeah. does indeed. He is a Almost large person. as if he was a professional athlete of some repute. If you haven't seen Rob Gronkowski, do yourself a favor and Google search. I'll do it with you, actually. He's, he's a beautiful man. He is a beautiful man. R-O-B Gronkowski. Mm -hmm. the, Gronkowski. The Steelers, the Steelers I though, the Rob part. <laughs> they were kind of running a, a, risky, a risky game plan last game of just not covering him. Yeah, they tried something <laughs> I mean... interesting and just kind of letting him do whatever he wanted to do. <laughs> now, he says, like, he's a good player, but whatever. It's one of those I... things where I look at and I'm like, this guy is like a man. It's kind it's like, of not fair. He's it like really a warrior, isn't. and he's a year younger than I am. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Dude, this guy was like, in fifth grade when I was in sixth grade? Mm -hmm. There's Look at many this. pictures of him with kittens crawling all over him. And oh, I yeah, like they this. did a photo shoot, and it's one of the greatest things in the world. Yeah, he's got a picture of him in a leather jacket staring down the camera with a kitten on his shoulder. That's he's also holding adorable. a goat. He's holding a goat? Yeah, a little baby goat. Where's he's got it in his arms. picture? Oh, uh, no. I'm hoping... Here, I'll link it to you. I'm hoping his name brings me luck because I named one of my Blood Bowl players after him. Oh, that's a good idea. He's six foot six, man. That's wow. not that tall. He's a tall He's man. Six six. That's like a wrestler. That's like a, a WWE Nick, you're wrestler. You're almost up there, right? No, I'm six foot even. Oh, my God. He's a giant. <laughs> <laughs> Just, if you've never seen the man before, I'm just trying to paint a picture for you so you have an idea of what sort of human being we're talking about. He's six foot six. It's like if you've ever seen Game of Thrones. I've never seen Game of Thrones, but I know <laughs> there's a character in Game of Thrones called the Mountain, right? Yeah. And he's just fucking huge. How big is that guy? Hold on. Uh, Let's make a comparison. Rob Gr Gronkowski, he's like... Probably like a foot taller. He's a good looking dude like Tim Tebow, but he can play football well. Gregor well, Clegane? Gregor Clegane is his name prior. Yeah, his nickname is The Mountain. Okay. This is... I'm looking for the dude that plays <laughs> So the you mountain. just Googled, like, The Mountain followed by his other alias in Game of Thrones. No, I found his other alias in the Game of Thrones. This guy's the same age as Gronk. Yeah. That's we're, weird. We're over the hill, man. We're probably past the median age. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Okay, well, this guy's much bigger. Okay, he's he's four hundred pounds. Holy fuck! Yeah, well, he's fucking huge. <laughs> that yeah. is a big man. He's only two <laughs> inches taller than Gronk is. That's still big though. Six Did eight. We really call him Gronk. Oh yeah, yeah, he's, it is. It's absolutely Gronk. Gronk. Have you seen him party? It's I call awesome. him Doctor Owski. Doctor, <laughs> no, I can't go down that road right now. Oh, that's a that's a pre-show banter joke. 
No one gets that. Oh, think this guy man. wears 32 size jeans? Uh, I bet he could. Mm-hmm. I bet he could six, cram his giant dong in there. Yeah, that'll be the real problem, I uh, guess. I might go buy Madden tonight. Yeah, do it. Just to play as Rob Gronkowski. That's the whole reason we started talking about this, is just play Madden have, to play as Rob Gronkowski. I hope they have the, the do I want to cheat option as the Patriots, though. Daniel Sedin is only rated in 85 in spite of his bounce back season last year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I, I wish I weren't horribly depressed and bored by that conversation. But Barry, you live in uh, Washington State now. You should start watching the NHL. That in no way puts me in a better position to watch the NHL. Yeah, you're close to the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, regionally, we're not even playing in the same like division as uh, anyone. I mean, important. there is no NHL team in Seattle, so yeah. Oh wait, yeah, that's right. Maybe one day. I don't think they want it. They want it. They want it in Tequila. I don't think that's a real place either. That's, that's, I, I, you now gotta, you're starting to really, really fish for information here. Oh, my Lord. Let's start the podcast then. <laughs> <laughs> we start it over from there. Oh, man. Let's talk about fucking Kingdom Hearts, bud. Hold up. 2.8. II.8. That's the real... That's the format. It's, just, it's this, not just... Game. It, it's the other things that surround it. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance HD, Kingdom Hearts X Back Cover, Kingdom Hearts Point Two Birth by Sleep of Fragmentary Passage. <laughs> Kingdom it's, Hearts it's HD a world. Final Chapter Prologue. <laughs> it's a clusterfuck of insanity. <laughs> that fucking name is so ridiculous. So stupid. Kingdom like said, Hearts Point Two. It sounds like a Between the Buried Me album. It really does. Kingdom Hearts point to birth by sleep a fragmentary passage. So let me give you guys the full rundown of what's going on here. So there was Kingdom a, Hearts bullshit. There was a leak uh, yesterday, even I think it was, of Kingdom Hearts two point nine, which seemed ludicrous, but was also founded on a lot of good information. Uh, that it was going to be two point nine, which was going to be you know the final link in the chain between two and three, and also chain Dream Drop memories. Distance and Chain by Memories and three fifty six over two and fucking hardcore mega apocalypse annihilation <laughs> syndrome. That the was other the, ones uh, you said were real. Yeah, just to frame it so yeah, nobody the last one was the only one I made up. up on the on the spot. The other yeah. one you were three. to like map out the Kingdom Hearts story. It would look like one of those boards in like a murder, like revenge film of trying to the figure lines. out. Who, <laughs> yeah, the lines going everywhere and trying yeah. to figure out what belongs where and who's connected Somebody to Somebody with a fucking homeless beard just in a corner yeah. just eating a pen trying to figure out what the storyline is. Lace is out, Sora. <laughs> <laughs> so if I understand this, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue is meant to be the bridge between Kingdom Hearts... One and two, birth by sleep, mm-hmm. 356 divided by two, dream yep. dob, drop 356 distance. over two. Would you mind <laughs> at least getting the nomenclature right if you're going to talk about mistake. it? My um, mistake. And Kingdom Hearts 3. But I have a uh, question for Square Enix. Why, why 2.8? Mm-hmm. It, where's, <laughs> and why where's, Roman numerals and then not Roman numerals well, even in the that, same you know, line? The mix and match there is a, is a grab bag of the most diabolical type. <laughs> but where's 2.9? Like, you're going from 2 to 3. You make a 2.5. They made a 2.5. Now we're going 2.8. Did they try to do 2.75, but someone in executive was like, that's ridiculous. No one's going to go for a two-significant digit uh, Kingdom Hearts (laughs) pseudo-sequel. you got to round it up. Were there eight eight games leading up to 3? Maybe that's, like, where the point is coming from. Maybe you got something here. Let's think about it. I really doubt it. I've got, the, I've got the chronological list here, okay? So All right, this count out. them up. Kingdom, Kingdom, Hearts, Kingdom, Hearts, Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep. Blank points begins at that stage. Uh, Kingdom what Hearts, does that mean? followed what does that by mean? Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2, which is spelled 358 slash 2 days. Yes. FYI, in case you've never seen it before. Kingdom Hearts, Chain of Memories. Kingdom Hearts... Fucking Chain of Memories happens while 358 Over 2 is happening. Yeah. Correct. They can't even list it chronologically. They have to fucking splice that out. <laughs> Three five eight over two ends after Chain of Memories. Then Kingdom Hearts two. Kingdom Hearts coded. Signs of what's next? I don't know what that is. Blank points know. ends. Blank points is happening the whole fucking time. By the way, since what's I introduced blank that point. Never even heard of blank points. Blank is that? <laughs> a, it must be a Japanese only thing. <laughs> no, it might be like an era. 
um, that's happening, like an epoch in the Kingdom Hearts. Maybe, uh, yeah, yeah. Blame yeah. Points is the secret ending of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep and Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Final oh, Mix. Okay. okay, so the secret ending. So that's not a game. Oh, okay. Well, now I'm kind of curious to play that. <laughs> anyway. Part of the problem, Bear. Yeah, I know. Kingdom Hearts 3D, Dream Drop Distance, and then finally Kingdom Hearts 3. So between all that, we have 1.5 and 2.5, which are just the remade slash final mix versions of any of those no, games that I listed before. I, while you were doing all of that, Mathis was actually actively trying to tally the numbers, and at some point, he couldn't anymore. <laughs> it, like, as you were saying them, he still couldn't do it. I was just reading down a list, admittedly, <laughs> yeah. with a little bit of flash. One, still... two, three, four, <laughs> he five, six. He had to go six, for the source. <laughs> seven. So that game that's coming out will make eight. Okay. Wow. That's more than I thought. I think we're giving him more credit for it than they're due. I don't know. That might be it, man. Otherwise, why wouldn't you make it 2.9? Because 2.9 is more before 3 than 2.8 is. Mathematically, yeah. you're fucking correct, but... Five, six, seven. Maybe know, they're man. taking a page out of the Firefox book, and they're going to start at point releases, and soon they're going to start going, like, one every couple months. And then in a year, it'll be, like, Kingdom Hearts 32. Right? They'll I, just go exponentially up. I just wish this didn't exist, first of all. Because we already got 2.5. Right. What do we get out of this? We get point two, which when you quantify it like that, it sounds like it's going to be a 30-minute cutscene. I think it will be. Putting 0 0.2 in the title of your game is just a very bold marketing strategy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> We're giving you a fifth of a game. Enjoy. <laughs> so it's got so the collection will feature an HD remaster of Dream Drop Distance, as well as Kingdom Hearts X back cover which was shown at Tokyo Game Show in 2012. Oh, that's not uh, just describing the box art. Right, previously known as Kingdom Hearts for PC Browsers. That's a riveting title. What? Okay, what? <laughs> it, is a browser game, it is a browser game for PCs and is only playable in Japan since July 18th, 2013. It features cartoon-like 2D models and is a prequel to the entire series taking place during the Keyblade War. An international port of the game, Kingdom Hearts... Unchained X was released for Android and iOS devices featuring content from the original game's release. So that whole game is being shoved into a uh, 2.8 final chapter prologue. You know the button on Twitter that says translate? We need one of those for each one of these titles so we can put it into an actual, like, any kind of meaning. It's all. set to tell the tale of the foretellers and revealing new parts of the Who series' the history. Who the fuck are the foretellers?! It's part of the Keyblade like Wars, the man! Runners. I'm listening! I like these games. I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. I've played then, a lot of them. The final piece is going to be Kingdom Hearts 0 0.2 Birth by Sleep, A Fragmentary Passage, a new part of the story taking place after the events of the original Birth by Sleep told from the perspective of Aqua. Who is Aqua? Aqua? She's one of the three people you play in Birth by Sleep. Okay. She's one of the it's, gemstones from Steven Universe. It's Spanish yeah. for water. <laughs> no, no. That's, that's Agua, Agua. You, right. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. The Little Mermaid. So there's like three timelines that are just you have to follow. You have to follow like the key, the Keyblade Wars, the stuff before Sora. Well, actually, then the stuff while Sora is asleep, and then the stuff while so after Sora wakes up. Doesn't Sora go into the Matrix? Also, well, while Sora's having that's like dinner one Kingdom time, Hearts then Bir Birth by Sleep fragmentary passage is happening. So that's, that's what all I'm saying. The storyline is one. fucking nonsense, but people eat this shit up. I eat this shit up. I eat a lot of this shit, and now I'm starting to question whether or not this shit is healthy. I've what? played the main games and one of the mobile titles, and that's it. Wait, what? I, I don't understand the process of going, like, all the things we just said, that goes, okay, now that's compelling content. I want to know more. Like, how do you I... jump over that? No, no, it's for people who are fans. It's like, I don't right. think anybody can jump, jump into this series, like, cold anymore. No. It's too yeah, fucking It's weird. impossible. We don't even know where to start because they keep changing the fucking starting point. Yeah. At least with like Metal Gear Solid Five, you don't need to know the story that much because the gameplay is compelling. Kingdom Hearts gameplay is like people are gonna crucify me for this. It's like a seven out. Of, it's like okay. It's not great. It's not it's a terrible. It's basic ARPG. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is. There's nothing freaking great. But people, when they saw like what is it, the Thunder Mountain summon from the trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3, people mm. fucking lost their shit. They were so excited. And I'm like, I, I will say the Kingdom Hearts 3 stuff is still looking good. I'm still excited for Kingdom Hearts 3. All this bullshit that's happening between now and Kingdom Hearts 3 is what's pushing me away from Kingdom Hearts 3. 
I think Kingdom Hearts 3 with its open world mechanics and with what I've seen of it is still going to be awesome. But every time this happens, I don't want to support it well, anymore. What have you played, Bear, out of the Kingdom Hearts stuff? I've played... Um, well, I played one and two. I got one, yeah. one point five, one point two. I got a little bit into three, five, eight over two. I got, uh, I I don't remember. I don't know the names of the games that so, I played. So, do you, can you, <laughs> can you, do you even understand? No. Do you even understand the story that's happening? I got it all the way through the organization thirteen stuff. I yep. was on board with everything there. I started to figure out like the fucking, um. No. Say it, Nort, and all yeah, that shit. No, I, I know those people. I know all the X people. I know Roxas, and I know <laughs> Axel, that name his buddy. Axel's red-haired dude. Yeah, got it memorized. Memorized. <laughs> you know, Roxas. Come on, man. Roxas is sore as nobody, man. What's Don't your, you know uh, this? What's your favorite uh, vocal tick from characters found in the Kingdom Hearts series? Oh, I've actually only played <laughs> Kingdom Hearts one, and I played it. My favorite memory of Kingdom Hearts 1, which I actually liked a lot, uh, was I borrowed it from my friend, and then I gave it back to him in front of like this girl he liked in ninth grade science class. And oh, he was like, man. He's like, come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't, don't give me Kingdom Hearts here. There's girls here. <laughs> it's like a Final Fantasy Disney crossover when you're trying to establish your name as a young man. Did they end uh, up getting hitched? Uh, no, they did date for a while, but... Mm. It didn't end well. I thought maybe their mutual love of Kingdom Hearts would be revealed at that moment. No. I think I probably set him back, sexually speaking, like six months at least. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That'll do it. Uh, completely so, yeah, new Hearts. part of the story. Kingdom Hearts. I... Kingdom Hearts point to Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage. How did this all happen? I, really, I thought the beginning of this was... People are really still excited about Final Fantasy VII potentially getting remade in, like, the year 2000, yeah. right? Because people have wanted that forever. So, like, here's some 3D models that don't look like total ass on the PS2 that are involved in this other universe. It's crossover fan fiction. People love that. You never know what direction it's going to go. And it's got all these big names and marketing stuff. So it's, like, get to go on, like, a little mini Disney World tour with an ARPG up. in it. That part I get. That part makes sense. Mm. Then it goes off into this bizarre Matrix story, and now I'm so gone. No, oh, dude, I'm reading it. I so really like, don't understand it. This, is, this perfectly encapsul encapsulates how crazy the story is. So here's a very small slice of one of the things that happens in one of the stories. Terra, who's one of the characters you play in Birth by Sleep, Spanish is converted perfect. into... Yeah, exactly. Is converted into Xehanort's new vessel, whose experiments later vessel. turn his heart into Ansem and his body into Xemnas. Ventus sacrifices himself, sacrifices himself to defeat his dark doppelganger Vanitas Ooh. to stop Xehanort's plan to obtain the X-Blade, <laughs> to which his body is placed what is the somewhere, somewhere within Castle Oblivion, while his heart ended up with the body of Sora himself, and, and new Keyblade Master Aqua ends up trapped in the realm of darkness after sacrificing herself to save <laughs> Terra. This is exactly like when I was reading the wiki for Mega Man ZX. It had just the same... Yeah. But people people are like, no, man, that makes sense. Do, do you not understand? What is a vessel? Is this like bleach? So I like got Zane, the impression I, this is bleach. It's, I don't know, man. Z no, it's like Xehanort doesn't die. I think he just transfers himself. But like his heart became one person and his body became another so it's like the reverse fusion dance. They split. Fucking... They together. <laughs> I think this is one of those things, and I say this with no judgment whatsoever, but there's like an, an anime looking glass. And you're on right. one side of the anime looking glass, and once you cross over, you can't go back. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't think I've crossed over, because sometimes Kate will be like, yeah, it's, it's like a high school, but they're all vampires, and they like fight demons. And I'm like, That's like on I, Netflix. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, I, it doesn't go into my brain. And the Kingdom <laughs> of Hearts stuff is like way yeah, on the other way, side. Mm -hmm. There's and like I, a whole another glass divider separating those people from oh, the guys yeah, you're talking about Oh, yeah. I don't previously. even know what's going on. That's like some portal on the other side of that <laughs> Kate's one. Kate's sitting there looking at yeah. the Kingdom of Hearts people like, they're fucking, well, no, they're crazy. Yeah, yeah they're, right. They're yeah. Talking about. It's like if they I least watch a shitload them. of anime. I don't get all this stuff. <laughs> I was like, if, as long as, if like, It'd be a little easier to follow if they just like some of the names weren't like fucking bizarre as yeah. shit. I don't mean to say, by the way, I'm, I'm I apologize there. I, I'm not trying to like alienate the people that like Kingdom Hearts because again, I, I really like the game.
games. I have fun with them, but the no, fucking stories. I was bonkers. midnight release for Kingdom Hearts 2. I was so into it. I loved it. Like, I got the story of Kingdom Hearts 1, and I was, like, pumped to have more. But then they were just like, the we're gonna... you. Yeah, they were no, just like, we're just going to do... right now. <laughs> there's, like, three secret endings, and then there's, they allude to the Keyblade Wars, and it's like, oh, this goes way into a deeper hole than I'm prepared to jump into right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. They saw the potential. Like, we need to set up for about 7,000 more games. So <laughs> we're just going to make it all basically variables, anime variables, named things. I should have seen this. me is from, like, a, a business perspective. It seems so Square Enix-y. And this is all, like, because I haven't followed it since 2002. This is all, like, theory crafting. But, like, if they wanted to just milk it, why don't they just make, like, Kingdom Hearts 3, 4, 5, 6, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. But it seems like kind of the Square Enix thing to do of, like, oh, we had, like, a really successful franchise. What we're going to do is never release a direct sequel for it and instead <laughs> just release, like, a bunch of side stories that Teasing people... It, right? Are they, though? Like, why don't they just make... If they want well, to make money... They are making 3 now, and it's going to be huge it took because 11 of all years. the yeah. yeah. Is this not potentially more of a pervasive problem than we're realizing like not just for square enix but for a lot of people in that they create a franchise that does well through a couple of iterations and then they're afraid to give the series the finality of the third installment well assassin's creed does the same fucking thing it's the story is nonsense and they have like mm -hmm. a bunch of side stories via mobiles and other things they do both though they do direct sequels as well as side stories all rapid succession but no, yeah, that's did, what they do. If they did, like, annualize sequels for Kingdom Hearts, people would be, you know, it, it, by this point, we'd be tired of it. I guess the fact that we're still talking about it is a success in a way, but we're not really talking about it as, like, oh, they, like, good on them for sticking to their guns and not making, like, a direct sequel, because they made all this weird, convoluted stuff in the middle that is, is confusing for a lot of people, I guess. It just seems weird to me that it's, like, if, if you're going to take the cynical approach of, like, they're, they're teasing out interest to make money... It doesn't seem like that's like their goal, or right. they would just make a Kingdom Hearts three. But the, why are they making these instead of like I don't, I don't get it. It's well, <laughs> the other side of the argument is they're extremely passionate about their story, and apparently they're really, really invested in it, which means that they don't really care if it's accessible or if lots of people are going to buy it. So you get people in at the major marker increments, the one, two, three, and then you sort of give the fan service in the side stories. It's I guess been eleven years. <laughs> Look, man, I, people I don't know either. involved in the original production of Kingdom Hearts one and two, some of them have died. Yeah. <laughs> the the twelve year olds that were playing Kingdom Hearts two have now gotten jobs out of university. That's, it's pretty, that's if what we're you were about. if you were thirteen when Kingdom Hearts two came out. You're now like 25, yeah. Almost. Well, there were politics, right? They when? skipped a hardware iteration. When did Kingdom Hearts One come out? 2002, you said. 2002, yeah. 2002. Yeah, we I were we were actually the 12 and 13 teen year olds that were playing. 2003. Yeah. Now we got a job at a university. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Using that phrase, I mean, is technically correct, but that's yeah. not really what people uh, tend to expect. I mean, I was what 16 when it came out. Kingdom Hearts One. No, oh, you're old. Ew. <laughs> Ew I still loved it. I played it like I played it like crazy. It was great, man. I'm tell I'll tell you what. This is this is a, a whole segment of us shitting on Kingdom Hearts 2.8, a game that I am probably going to buy. Oh yeah, it's not my intention to <laughs> to shit on that. At the same time, I think like at, when I was at that age, though, I was like heavily like in my anime phase. Like mm -hmm. I was watching. Like, that's all I watched. I would buy the VHSs for $50. I had two episodes of anime on it. Yeah. And that's what I was doing with my work money. It could be a chemical thing. Maybe at a certain stage in, like, your hormonal <laughs> development, you're more likely to be, like, able to process these things. And yeah, we passed of, our like, prime now. Absorbing useful things at school, I was too busy absorbing the lore of Kingdom Hearts. That's where, yeah. like, all of that brain power mm -hmm. was going. Remember when the floor was actually lava? Yeah, oh, yeah. we don't have that magic anymore. Not anymore, no. We just play video games instead. Yeah. Josh has it still. We don't. Josh, Josh found a way. Josh, to when we lose it, it is here. absorbed into Josh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the childlike wonder Highlander. Uh, well, uh, speaking of Kingdom Hearts game names, I've got one for you. you ready? Oh, okay. Uh, Metropolis Part One: The Miracle and the Sleeper. Oh, here's a fun game. Here's a fun game. Rock Band 4 track list song or Crossover. Kingdom Hearts right, game name. Okay. Okay, ready? There's the first one. Metropolis Part 1, The Miracle and the Sleeper. Yep. Yep. Okay. You got a... Uh, let's go with 
My God is the Sun. Can I mix and match artists and game titles? Yeah, you can do that. That works probably a little better. Lightning Bolt, I Miss the Misery. That's uh, Rock Band 4 for sure. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, 358 over 2 <laughs> by the Killers. <laughs> That's got to be a little... That throws you off a bit, right? It threw me off completely. The full Rock Band 4 track list has been announced. All right. Rock Band 4 coming out in... Uh, I want to say it's October, right? Something like that. November? Soon. October? Competing s- with Guitar Hero Live, which will be mm-hmm. cu- coming out around the same time, which is good. Good for I can't everybody. Wait to see. The whole October audience six. boo me. Yeah, no, that's going to be the most exciting aspect by far. Uh, I'm, I'm going to point out some some notable inclusions in the Rock Band Four track list for those of you who may be curious and don't want to look up the whole thing yourself. Uh, you got some Aerosmith on there with Toys in the Attic, Arctic Monkeys, Avenged Sevenfold, some Black Keys, Disturbed Dream Theater making another approach, another attempt at becoming a rock bandable song. Skip the Cure. <laughs> I did skip the cure. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just running through real quick here, alphabetically, or just for my personal preference and Uptown eliminating funk. the bands that I think are bad. Oh. Not really. Fall Out Boys on there. You got some Foo Fighters. You got some Group Love. Uh, Imagine Dragons. Jack White's making an appearance. Judas Priest, Killers, System of a Down, Van Halen, Rush, REM, all kinds of good stuff, man. As expected, Rock Band 4 is going to be a game full of songs that people enjoy and like to play. That most people of younger age probably don't know. I don't know. I think there's a few on here. There's a few that they'll know, like Uptown Funk. Yeah. I'm surprised Uptown that Funk. made the cut. <laughs> that, I guess He's going to give is, it to uh, you. That is this Rock Band Edition's If We Don't Include This Song, People Will Riot. <laughs> people won't thing. buy it. People, yeah. won't ri- people won't buy it, and people will riot. Oh, shit. That is an old marketing Wait. term. Can we pick out from this list which one of these is the green grass and high tides? Oh, sure. Does that Meaning make sense like to everyone? Meaning like the final boss Yeah, yeah. Track? So last... Uh, <laughs> actually, I think our, our final boss track was always Boston's uh, Foreplay, Foreplay Long, Long Time. Time. Yep, that's yeah. the one. Mm-hmm. That was the closer. What was your closer song? Every time you played Rock Band, you had to have, had to have a closer song. What was it? Another attempt at uh, Fire and Flames. On well, that okay. was Guitar Hero, but yeah. like they actually did port that over to Rock Band eventually, and it was Man. like way harder. Did you ever beat it? I beat it a million times on uh, hard, but I only got to like seventy six percent or something on expert. Mm. I never quite made it. Mathis, you a Rock Bander? Uh, I was into <clears> Rock Band <throat> one for a little while. I was by the point Rock by the point or time rather Rock Band one had come out. I was kind of worn out on the music stuff. And By the time Rock Band living, 1 came out? Well, I didn't have, like, the room for, like, all of the instruments. Oh, yeah. And, in, in, like, I was living in my mom's basement, so Guitar Hero kind of was, like, the only thing mm. that I really was playing. I don't know why. I didn't like the Rock Band guitar very much. I remember not liking it. Yeah, they used the Guitar Hero 3 Les Paul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember it being completely shitty. It's not but that bad. There. This is how the spectrum goes. It's like you're teetering on top of a mountain, and as soon as something's not good, it's dog shit. The game was good. I don't. <laughs> I think the guitar, the original guitar that came with Rock Band One, was crap. I kind of that bad. I think the Rock Band guitar is kind of garbage. It's not good. But, it's not better. Like the the Flying V, I really like. The Les Paul is fine, but the Stratocaster is okay. You're getting you're getting lower and lower on the totem pole of what you actually. <laughs> There's, we used guitar. it for like three years. <laughs> I will Perspectives not... are basically that the Rock Band one is super clicky. It's mm. got deep yeah. buttons, whereas the Guitar Hero ones are raised more. So when you're done, you can basically slide your finger over it. I prefer that myself. I don't think it's bad in either direction, but that's what I like. Right. I probably won't be picking up the new Rock Band, though. I just have no need for the whole like set of drums and guitars and stuff again. It'll be one of those things that... Maybe I'll use a few times, and then eventually it'll start collecting dust and taking up space. No, oh, it will. Yeah, I mean, obviously. Here's the uh, here's your tier ranking of peripheral equipment for Rock Band and Guitar Hero games. Mm-hmm. You got your Les Paul up there is uh, number one or two. Uh, I bought myself some Ion drums, mm-hmm. which Next cost a few hundred mm-hmm. dollars, but they were totally worth it. So I'm going to put them up there too. Uh, the Rock Band original guitar is actually in the same category as playing the game with a gamepad. 
Oh, that's bullshit. Yeah, those are the exact same experience. I put like probably six or seven hundred hours into rock bands one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. That is just malarkey. That guitar is you should you'd have better luck playing with it upside down than you would play. That with is it nonsense. Regularly. It's just bad. Just absolute nonsense. This track list is pretty impressive, though. I I am looking forward to another iteration. I, I don't know really what I'm expecting out of Rock Band 4, though, that would make me think, oh, this is the game that we were hoping for when it was still a big popular thing. When I don't Band, think that's the goal. I, well, really? I mean, what are they trying to do, then? I just Refresh think it was, like... public consciousness. Yeah. yeah, I think it was. it's more of a, like, enough time has passed, maybe people will buy this again. Well, that makes sense. Got oversaturated, you give it some space and some drop distance, and then you drop another one. (laughs) (laughs) You can't get away from it now. Can't do it. Uh, Well, Rock Band 3 was in October of 2010, so it was about five years ago that this happened. That seems like a reasonable time to... uh... Well, they they certainly haven't been developing Rock Band 4 since then. That's definitely not the case. Harmonix made Rock Band Blitz, and then they did that Disney game. They supported the hell out of three with DLC, though. They did, like, three years' worth of incremental DLC, and I bought a lot of it. Yeah. They were doing it every week for a while. They were having new songs out every week. They had the Rock Band Network, which was doing really well. People were actively trying to build the library for the Rock Band Network just on their own time. I had a blog that I actually had bookmarked that was like, this is this week's new songs. And I'd be like, oh, shit, there's, like, five I want. And then Mm -hmm. I'd go buy them all. Yeah. That was, you had to budget for that. Yeah. I had like eighty dollars a month. I had budgeted toward rock band music. Yeah, you're like, oh, is this song worth two fifty? I don't know. <laughs> is it worth two fifty to get the, uh, you know, just what I needed by the Cars? I mean, it's fun, but it's kind of easy. Yeah, loop <laughs> nine times for a twenty five minute experience. Yeah, they exactly. let you do a preview of it though. They give you like thirty seconds into each track. Yeah, which I, really I was saying they had a really good system going with Rock Band Network and the music library too for DLC. It was great. Hate that- all my DLCs on my 360, and I'm going to be getting the new one on PS4. So I just am so uh, screwed. I don't know over. what to do. You got to get an Xbox One. That's the only thing. It actually might be the thing that makes me. Get an <laughs> might be cheaper. Oh, no. For your no. for your financial yeah. investment, up I don't front, want an Xbox, but that might be cheaper. Yeah, I mean, Rock if you get... needs to come out with like an account that you can just log into, right? Yeah. And just transfer your that songs. That would be awesome. Be fantastic. Mm-hmm. They had the pro guitar as well, which is something I forgot about with Rock Band Three, mm-hmm. and I had one, and it worked. I mean, it was pretty really, impressive. Really, it worked. Yeah, it worked. It did the thing it was supposed to do. It's just, it's not, it's not something people want. They say they want it, and they say it would be cool to learn guitar using Rock Band, but nobody wants to actually learn guitar using Rock Band. Nobody wants to work. And yeah, nobody learn. wants to learn a real valuable trade market skill. That would just be stupid. If you wanted that, you would just play Rocksmith. Yeah. That's true. Because Rocksmith does it a lot better. We could plug a real guitar into it. But that's the that's what I'm saying is like my argument for nobody wants this in rock band is that Rocksmith was almost a perfect guitar education tool and no one bought it. It's Rocksmith is actually pretty popular. Is it? Is it? You guys are you're, you're negative to, Nancy's man. No, compared to the sales of rock band and no, guitar here. Of course Hero. not. But it's diff- it's like saying, you know, the sales of freaking, like, homebrewed horchata are not the same as Coors yeah, Light. Yeah, but homebrewed you know? like, horchata is not popular. That's the argument you're making. Okay, uh, according to Steam Spy, because I'm that guy, mm-hmm. Rocksmith has 188,000 owners on Steam. Okay, that's pretty good. That's a lot. That's I, a lot I did of not pe- expect that. Yeah, that's quite a bit. My bad. My I, did, I did not think it did that well. I was under the impression Rocksmith did not do that well. Actually, Rocksmith 2014 has 419,000 owners. Really? Mm-hmm. Whoa. Oh, shit. What? Am I just wrong? Rocksmith, I thought, was... How did it sell 400,000 copies? Turns out a lot of people like the guitar. What? I had no idea. <laughs> All these people bought a cable to play with their actual instruments, right? It's, it's not that to, expensive. Right? No way. I'm really happy for Rocksmith now. This is exciting news. I've always heard that uh, Rocksmith is a pretty good product. It is. Yeah, no, I, I never meant to insinuate that it was bad. I'm just saying that I thought it was the not very commercially there. successful. Well, look at that. <laughs> good job, Ubisoft. <laughs> <laughs> Ubisoft San Francisco. All right. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to look more into that later on, but anyway, 
Uh, yeah, Rock Band 4. Full track list is up. If you want to see it, you can totally go look at it. Because it is I think interesting. The track list for Rock Band 4 is the weakest of any of the Rock Band games ever. Really? Yes. Ooh. I will probably buy the game regardless. And obviously this is something that comes from like a personal taste mm-hmm. area. But I've always been the type that is like, I want my Rock Band to be like a selection of relatively easy songs that I know. I'm thinking of stuff like, uh, you know, Celebrity Skin. Let me, let me go back to like maybe Rock Band 2 here. Sure. Um, and look, look at the track list here. Kids in America, you know, stuff like this. Mm-hmm. I, I like this. Why does Rock Band 2 not have the track list in the Wikipedia article? This is the only reason anyone wants to go <laughs> to the Rock Band 2 Wikipedia. Okay, Rock Band 2 track list. And then, like, I want the harder stuff to be classic rock. I want it to be, you know, Flirting with Disaster by Molly Hatchet and, um, you know, Foreplay Long Time by Boston and... Other other examples of accessible songs that I was a big fan of. Rockin' yeah. Me was was a really good one. I thought um, You Oughta Know was fun, et cetera, et cetera. Not everyone's going to be the same kind of person there. And this one for, like, Rock Band 4, I'm like, I only know, like, five of these songs, and I'm not that excited to play them. Like, you Short got, Skirt, Long Jagged, cool. You got weirdly specific, though, with your criteria. You started to go into like, all right, and now in the three to well, four star tier of difficulty, there can only be classic rock. Here, no, here's my here's my thing. It's basically like I don't recognize a lot of the songs, and the ones I recognize, I don't think are necessarily going to be that much fun to play. There are some exceptions, um, like Four Non Blondes. What's up is going to be funny mm-hmm. uh, several times, I'm sure. Uptown I, Funk. Maybe that'll the be less fun. novelty songs, the better, in my opinion. If there's a silly song, I'd probably only play it twice. Yes, but then there are some songs that I consider kind of novelty songs, even though most people would probably disagree with me because I don't want to play them more than once. Like shit like Visions in, in rock bands. Oh, God. That one was or two. so bad. I didn't want to play that yeah. either. Yeah. And um, oh, I, I like forget. Maps. M- Maps is a great Maps song. Maps was pretty good, though. Um, the, the Dream Theater <laughs> one from Rock Band 2 <laughs> is just like... I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of the time when I like super, super hard songs in Rock Band 2 that are just like basically impossible for the drummer or guitarist to play. I'm like, this is a, I'm playing this as a party game, not as like a score attack yeah, thing. Yeah. So, well, you can set your difficulty independently of each other, though. So, yeah, but we don't enjoy it. listening to Panic Attack for the most part. So, and, and and that's what I mean. Like, it's personal taste. But like, I'm I'm playing Panic Attack on easy is kind of like I'm, I'm missing both I'm ends waiting. Of the spectrum there. I'm like, what's the point for me? You got to find the right people to play a rock band with. Because if you're playing with the people that love to play Panic Attack on Expert and you're just sitting there. Ch, ch, yeah, ch, exactly. Ch, 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 you're not going to be having much fun with that. We have, I don't know why I'm being painted as some kind of rock band casual here. No, you're being painted as. I don't, I, I don't like the new rock band track list because it doesn't format itself exclusively to the way I play rock band guys. Yes, like, and I'm, the one, I'm, I'm not spending somebody else's money on rock band for <laughs> either, so I think it's, it's a valid concern for me personally. But I, you know, I was the perfect age to play these games in college. I lived in the house with seven other people. We always yeah, had four good. people to play like every instrument. We were all good on expert. We taped microphones for rock band three to like our ventilation duct yeah, and hung them down we so okay. we could do harmony. We wow. played a ton of Rock Band Beatles. Like we we owned all the the Rock Band games. I even have Rock Band Blitz, which is. But I don't think you're the casual. I think you're probably the most yeah. intermediate out of all of us here. But I don't like the track list. What is the percentage you expect of songs that you think would be fun to play out of a new track list? Like fifty percent, or yeah, maybe fifty. But 50? It, my my problem with this, I guess, is kind of that like Rock Band's mine so much DLC already that I can understand why like you know the heart song is. I kick it out, you know? Mm-hmm. It's not Barracuda. It's not, um, I've been trying to think of the other, um, Crazy on You or something like that. They've already been in there, but at the same time, I'm like, well, I, I kind of just want, like, well, Crazy on You. I had one criticism that I think I'm actually going to change my mind on. I was worried that this was going to be a lot of rehashes from other ones, and granted, there's a couple, I think, but mm-hmm. for the most part, it's songs I haven't seen in other rhythm games. I'm going to give so you. I'm going to give you five songs off the list that we've found here, and if you can tell me affirmatively that those are not mainstream, everybody knows them songs, then I will stand by your point that this okay. is not a solid track list, okay? We'll start off easy. The Killer Somebody Told Me. Of course, yeah, it's very Maybe well the known. most ubiquitous song mm-hmm. on all of these. All right. Yeah. Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. 
the impression that I get. Is that that's the impression that I? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yep. I know this one. That's number two. Yeah, I didn't know that one. You didn't know that one. Okay, no. so that's interesting. I oh, is that the one that's like? Hey, ho, ha, ho, ho, it's the mighty ho, mighty boss tone, so it's like ska. Yeah, I don't know the I don't know the mighty mighty boss tones that well. What's though. the name okay. of the song? Yeah, I mean, uh, the impression that I get. It's you've never heard it. I'm pretty knock sure you've all heard it. Knock on wood or something. Knock on. Something I think so. Wood. Yeah, hold on. Let that's me only have two right now. So I'm guessing that this is what I know. Great podcasting We're on number two, here. yeah. Uh, all right. Um, hold on. Sorry, I had one. There's there's Imagine Dragons, which you've probably heard, I bet my life. I don't know this one, I think. I, I don't either, but I imagine it will be okay. Ah, man. Wow. I, I know the one. Oh, you've go, heard uh, this song. Yeah, I know you've the heard the Mighty Mighty Boss like, Tones one. Radioactive. Radioactive. Radio there's, there's that, of course, as well. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we all know this one. Uh, all right, hold on. I'm still looking. This this was a challenge to myself as well, because I don't know if I can actually do this. Uh, who, Brad Paisley featuring Kate Keith Urban start a band. I don't know about really that, right? I imagine a lot of people do. Yeah. Uh, short skirt, long jacket. Yeah, of course. I'm excited for that one. Three. Uh, that might be it, actually. Friday, I'm in love by the Cure is a big song. Okay, yeah, there you go. There's there's the number four. Uptown Funk is probably like, one of the biggest songs of the last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. You got big. five. You got it. I'll admit, and also uh, Panama by Van Halen is uh, that's gonna be fun. Yeah. Which one is that? You know, because <laughs> Panama. Oh, yeah, I actually know it. It's oh, the only okay, part yeah, I know. It it's the one where they say Panama. Yeah, I remember that now. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get the. But I'm like, okay, that's this song if, now. It's if good. you're gonna put a live song in there, it should be Lightning Crashes. If you're gonna put an Arctic Monkey song in there, it should be like, I bet you look good on the dance floor. You know, I'm really excited that they put Spiders on there because it's great to have representation from the first System of a Down album. But it's mm. like the least song I wanted out of the whole album. It's going to be silly. Except for maybe Sugar, because sugar I've heard it Sugar would be the funnest fucking song to it play. It would be fast and energetic, yes, but yeah. it would also be short and repetitive. And Spiders is slow and repetitive. I want mm. something that's a little more dynamic. <laughs> but I feel I'm like glad it got on there at all. The obvious counterpoint to what I'm saying is that those songs already exist as DLC. And I'm like, yeah. Right. But then I like, then well, I got like the $200 startup fee. It's also kind of easy to say you got all of those cliche everybody knows them songs in the first three games. And those are all, you know, supposedly going to be carrying over through your library or like collection of songs into yeah, Rock Band 4. I gotta buy them again, though. I think so. Is there yeah. like a port fee? Because they did that with 2 to 3 where you paid like $12 and you just get all your songs again. I think it's, as far as I've heard, is if you got them on the same platform that you're going to get Rock there. Band 4 on, yeah, yeah. they may transfer. That's a lot of songs, then. Yeah, it's Imagine a good doing a marathon. You got three to four hundred songs to choose. Imagine from. paying, you know, a thousand dollars though to download those three to four hundred songs. Matthew, so you right? just sitting there quietly listening to a Mighty Mighty Boston song? I really am right now. It's fantastic. <laughs> Just this is talk, like is middle school. This is like my middle school life right here. And it's taking up most of your bandwidth to do it too, because you turned yeah. into a robot. Turning into oh, really? A yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> All right, I guess I'm done listening to that. Am I turning okay. into a robot? No, you're okay. Good. I right, guess sweet. Mathis just has a much worse connection than you. I guess my my download speed should be a hundred. Fuck. No, oh, that sucks. Well, I abused ninety five of it. Well, that was great. Flashback to 1997. I enjoyed yeah. it. Uh, let us know if you're excited about Rock Band 4, the soundtrack, or, or if you're uh, looking toward getting Guitar Hero Live instead. Also, well, uh, see, is the Guitar Hero Live full track list? I don't think they've announced their uh, full track list, but they do have a few of their... For all my negativity, it's not really meant to be that negative. I'm going to get it anyway. Yeah. And probably what I expect will happen is that I will uh, find some songs from the list that I didn't know and then like. Right. Same. There's a song listed on the Guitar Hero Live website, like their official website. Yeah. It's called Demon to Lean On, but the album art for it is just a screenshot of an iMessage conversation. Yeah. It just says, buying my glow-in-the-dark king of the beach right now. I got you. If you want to give me an address, I'll have him send it. Hell no, bro. I'm buying it. LOL. I've been buying the shit for years. It's tradition. Three thumbs up emoticons. One of the real ones. Bear, that sounds gone, like an actual album. It's gone too far. I don't get it. <laughs> that could be their album art, for all we know. It might be. They've connected on such like a real level with the children. 
You think Apple would go after uh, them for using their emoji? Probably. Kind of feel like the Guitar Hero Live track list is a little bit more my style right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm looking at a lot of these now. I'm actually starting to agree with you. You got some Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Tenacious. Oh, when D you were young, here. that's a big one. Alice in Chains, Wolf yeah, Mother, yeah. Weezer, Queen, Biffy Clyro. Oh my God. What is a Biffy Clyro? Biffy Clyro. That's going to be some fun stuff. Look at this. They got like direct listen to. Biffy Clyro on Spotify links from Guitar Hero. Oh my God, they're they're changing my allegiances live. Kasabian Dream Theater. Has it Kasabian or Kasabian? It's Kasabian. Who knows? Kasabian. You got it. Passengers on here. Pearl Jam again. My yes. God, it's Pearl Jam. Well, they're oh certainly appealing to you know guitar heavy music. I would hope as so. they should. Yeah. <laughs> Skrillex Bangarang. Oh, shit. Bangarang. Do your best Bangarang. That's going to be really fun to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Bangarang. Like, bang -arang. Everybody like just that, has right? to yell it. Oh, man. Well, tell us where your allegiances lie, and we will we will debate heartily into the night. No, Speak next. Ten songs here. Speaking of going heartily into the night, it's party hard. Party hard. Party hard. Ah, the first of two games we're going to be talking about today. It's 3 a.m. Your neighbors are having a loud party. Stop them. Party Hard is Tiny good. Build's award-winning stealth strategy game about stopping the party by any means. Tiny Build, of course. The publisher known for such games as Speedrunners and Party Hard, a game where you murder everyone. As juxtaposed to Speedrunners, a game where you run really fast. And don't kill anybody, as far as I know. You can <laughs> knock them unconscious onto spikes, but they'll get back up. Mm. They used to die. They patched that out. You play as someone who is really tired of the neighbors having loud parties. And instead of calling the police, you decide it's a better idea to kill everyone using your faithful knife and the environment. The tactical strategy follows a series of killings at parties throughout the USA. So not but these are not small soirees. They're like sixty mm. person. These yeah, are that's... White House gathering parties. <laughs> So the, it's, this is not um, just one party that's bothering you. You, you decide parties across the country you need to go down, right? That's I guess what I he mean. Keeps moving and then being interrupted. Like, why didn't he just move in the first <laughs> place before he kills everyone? Maybe because he's got to get out of town now that he killed everybody. I, I apologize for the uh, weird echo effect there for everybody. He's got to stop moving next to frat houses. I think is the issue. Or like barbecue areas. Like, that's one of the parties you murder. It's like a big old <laughs> barbecue. Sack, for God's sake. He keeps going places with 100 cars pulling up to these things every five seconds. Yeah, one of them's on, like, a yacht. Like, he, had, game, to, he had to have ended up on the yacht by choice, right? He didn't just the game happen to be on a yacht. Is mediocre. Oh. So, yeah. right, tell me about it, yeah. Tell me it's about like, it, Mathis. Come it's on. It's like if, like, what, like, Hitman and uh, Hotline Miami had a baby and it was just, like, a C student. Oh. With a little McPixel thrown in there for macabre well, humor's sake. Yeah. Like, it's just, it doesn't do, it, I mean, it, it's not like it's broken or anything, but it just feels uninspired and boring-ish because it's a little too easy, I found. The gameplay and loop is very tedious. So it's is the music loop. A oh, lot of walking hurt. slowly back and forth between multiple places, dragging bodies, putting them in a dumpster waiting for a right thing to happen, and then they eventually dying and starting over. They don't punish you hard enough, in my opinion, because like when the cops show up, if they figure out it's you, you can just run away from the cop until he just gives up and says, I'll get you next time. I'm like, you just <laughs> murdered. He's too old for that shit. Yeah, he's like, he's too old for that shit, and he leaves. He gets in this cop car and leaves with like bodies on the floor. And he's <laughs> like, all right, I'm just going to keep murdering the rest of this party, I guess, until you come back, and then I just run away from you. But then There's... Mario shows up and nails the window shut, and then you can't go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really what happens. Like it stops you from being able to exploit that anymore. So they are aware that that's a thing. It's not, but it's not like it's not enough because I can, I've usually been able to beat the level by running away from him two or three times without having to worry about it. And when Mar by the time Mario boards up all the shortcuts, I've killed everybody. Like the level's over. Are we talking the cop Mario never like beat. Mario Maker Mario? Yeah. Yeah, he's like he looks like he you know red shirt, blue overalls. He comes out he with a hammer and starts. You yeah, you he knocks you to the him. ground, stomps your head oh, for a while when he does that. It's um. I just like the. I feel like the game wants you to be stealthy and quiet, and when you fuck up, 
it should just be a huge like the cop should never leave the cop should chase you oh, so yeah, that definitely. it demands perfection out of you if they're sending doesn't. one patrol car for a party where there are 27 corpses lining the floor i feel like that's maybe a little underwhelming and he just he just puts them in body bags and then leaves yeah so. It, the cops pull up and kill 20 people in, when they smear them across the room. Oh, yeah, the cop pulls up. <laughs> it requires, you know, acknowledging that this is a gameplay abstraction. Yes. You know, it's not said in, like, no. a David Cage I universe. Will not. I'm just saying, like, the, the punishment isn't punishing enough. It's too, in my opinion, too easy. And the gameplay loop, like Nick said, gets very repetitive and pretty boring pretty quickly. Hmm. The environment kills are not varied enough or interesting enough to really right. like hold the game above mediocre. That's what I thought was going to be the differentiating quality when I heard what this premise was, that it was going to be combos where you creatively figure out ways to link one sequence to another and then eliminate the whole thing in one fell swoop so you could clear a level in like maybe a minute if you know what to do perfectly. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I want to do some like every extend extra stuff and have like every interactive part of the environment somehow play a role mm -hmm. if you're creative enough. That's not what happens. You just slowly stab everyone, carry them to the dumpster, kill two or three people sometimes by poisoning the food. And then you do it on a boat. I didn't get to the boat. There's no boat? I'm sure there is. I didn't get to it. You need a boat. Neither man. did I. Uh, I don't think it's that bad, personal. personally. Yeah, like, I was waiting for that. Yeah, tell me about it. I wanted to let everyone get the, get the anger out first. <laughs> but I don't necessarily <laughs> think it's like... Here's man that said is a C student. I don't disagree with that, but I don't think it's like a high school C or God forbid a middle school C. I think it's like a college C. It's like you know you worked hard in high school, you got into a good school, you're getting C's, but you're still gonna graduate with like you know your masters in microbiology or something like that, right? Like it's not. I don't think it's a bad game. I don't find the gameplay loop tedious. The, is the punishment punishing enough? I think it is because. You know, you could spend 10 minutes setting up a level, and then if you fuck it up at the last possible second, you have to start over from zero, which I, I honestly found it a little bit too punishing, but they have to inflate That's the length end, of the though. game somewhat. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's only like eight levels. Um, you know, Gosh. bonus points because Twitch chat integrates with it adequately, and it works. Kind yeah, of how a little does that bit, work, by the way? You just basically give it a... You, you have like a little token that you can give the game, mm. and then it logs into your Twitch chat as you and basically does like a straw poll, bean poll type thing. Okay. Choice chamber style. Yeah. And uh, people vote on like the next thing they want to show up at the party. There's a little bit of a lack of variety, and usually there's like things that chat just prefers. Mm. Like they'll be like, well, if I have a choice between like a bear and a bodybuilder, I'm sending the bear to the party, mm. right? Yeah. Obviously. A bodybuilding um, bear would have been ideal. It would be cool if there was more absurdity like that. But then if you put a bodybuilding bear in there, you got to come up with something that's going to get 50-50 with a bodybuilding bear. Oh, yeah, that's but true. And I don't know. At that point, we need like some top men on that job. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that bad, though. I mean, I, I had a reasonable amount of fun uh, with it. I probably won't play much more than we did on the NLSS the other day, but I thought it was okay. Just okay. Yeah, Party just okay. Hard. Just okay. Like, it found a niche it just needed to push the absurdity higher is all. Like, the, the gameplay just was a little slow. And variety. Right? The variety, and variety. a big bump. The game has a beautiful and richly detailed pixel art style. Would you agree with that? Yeah. No, I like yeah, the I art quite a bit. Good. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. I think it suffered a little in that the perspective made it sometimes hard for me to tell when I had line of sight with people because you can't always see the windows perfectly clearly. So I ended up losing a lot of times for, you know, basically not realizing there was someone watching mm. that I've I thought there the was problem, a wall. I've also had the problem of, like, am I on the right plane to stab this person? I've, like, oh. stabbed yeah, yeah, and yeah. missed because I thought I was lined up with them, but I'm not. The, right. the classic brawler so like, Z-axis You thing. miss and they're like, oh, oh, oh and they run. You're like, ah, you would have been dead if I, you they're know. They're always faster was... to get to the phone. For a killer, you have yeah. no stamina at all. Like, you can run <laughs> for three seconds and that's it. I think you'd be better prepared. You think you'd have more stamina. weapons. You would think the first thing you do as a murderer is disconnect all the phones. Yeah, yeah. Why, you can sabotage the, the oven and stuff. Why can't you just cut the phone lines first? Well, I guess it's you don't not... want to... Uh... <laughs> I hate this <laughs> argument of, like, all games are abstractions I... to right, some degree. Fucking... It was a joke. Why don't, you just, why don't you just lock the doors and light the house on fire, right? It's a game. The gameplay loop is stabbing people pseudo stealth running away from the police you know it's but like wouldn't it be cool if you could sever the phone lines and cut the power and there would be like reactions they'd have like because if you cut the power obviously everybody's either going to freak out and panic and run away or they're going to well, treat it like a lights out party 
Yeah. There'll be bodies all over the floor, and they'll just keep partying. Oh, they, they keep care. dancing. It's hilarious. They decapitate the DJ. They'll keep dancing. That'd like, be a fucking awesome when party. Pac Man eats out when you a dance. power pellet and eats a yeah. ghost. The ghost goes back to the graveyard, but then it just comes out later. Like, what? I don't understand. The ghost you can't is kill ghosts, man. Ghost why, can't you, ghost? why can't you be the ghost in Pac Man, huh? Exactly. Where's that storyline? Just mod it. <laughs> it's like you can't make the argument. You can make the argument, but it falls on deaf ears for me that, like, you know, why can you do this but not this? I do agree that there. it would be cool if there were more environmental things that you could do. Most of the environmental yeah. stuff is just like it lights a fire or like it causes an explosion or, you know, you can push someone into this exploding barrel. I agree that it would be cool if there was like mousetrap style stuff where you could kind of set up like a Rube Goldberg machine, but yes. I also feel like yeah. that's a little bit of a different mm -hmm. game. I'm going to side with Mathis and Nick here to say that we don't really have a lot of kill everyone at a party simulators to base our ideas of this off of, so we're maybe trying to hash it out a bit to figure out where this genre could go, right? As opposed to just sort of accepting this is like, this is our first point of entry into kill everybody at a party games. Yeah. Right? Well, I just feel like the game straddles a line of like, it doesn't know if it wants to be like super stealthy or super goofy. And it can't figure right. out what side of that line it wants to be on. So it does both sides mediocre. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like a, it takes a serious approach to a goofy premise. And neither of those things really mesh with each other. So if you could just amp up the absurdity and make the gameplay from moment to moment more dynamic, I think you'd have a, a better time. But I, I grant that they've also found some good things about it, too. How, how heavy is the... It's not hyper violent, is it? Or it's pretty violent. It's pretty it's violent. extremely violent. Is yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, you deca like when you kill a DJ, you like put his head on the DJ turnstile, oh, and, and okay, his neck good. just See, keeps I was hoping spewing. it was going to be more like that. I like it's like that comic violence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm like, still. I'm. I'm almost selling myself on Party Hard right now. When you push someone into a flaming barrel, you see like their skeleton on fire, and they're like flailing around, like. <laughs> So, and then people come dance by the ashes. This is correct, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not going to argue that right the fire, people right? in the game act logically. The people in the game act extremely illogically. Well, my, like, I think the point, like even Nick was saying, is the problem is they don't react enough about anything. They don't do much. It sounds like and at I, all sometimes is the issue. It does, they, they, their reactions are dance, randomly go from room to room, or call the cops. And that's My about. framework for thinking about Party Hard is that it's basically like a higher res single screen arcade game, like a like a Crystal Caverns or something like that. Like I, I don't necessarily, and this is not to give it like uh, extra leniency, but rather than considering it like a more modern game with like a linear progression, like Hotline Miami or something yeah. like that, I consider this is basically like a score attack game that with that would... like a Super Nintendo style art. I really think a lot of my arguments would fall away if there just was more, and you know, I'll say it for a millionth time, variety in the gameplay. More things to do, more things to interact with. Uh, maybe even make it a little bit more faster paced. I don't know. I just want more craziness happening within the game because too often I found myself just being like, well, I just have to wait for this person to walk into the other room by himself so I can stab him and get rid of him because I'm out of things within the environment right. to play with. Is that on you as a player to figure out different ways to interact with it? Or no, just I have not straight up, because like, you can press a button and see everything you can interact with oh, okay. in the environment. So when you've used all of those and there's still like 15, 10 or 15 people left, now you just you have to wait for them to be by themselves mm -hmm. so you can stab them and then get rid of them. You can't just accept a half-assed job, right? You can't say, "Well, I've killed twenty of the forty right. people." Right, your guy here, won't. Probably... He, he won't do. He won't take mm -hmm. that as an answer. Man. So more things. Just give me more toys, and I would be very happy. That's fair. Well, Party Hard is twelve eighty nine, which is an interesting price. It's available on Steam right now. You can go get yeah. it. Yeah. Mm hmm. Developed by Pin. Pinnacle. P I N O K L. Pinnacle Games. Pinnacle. There you go. All right, cool. Next up, Super Mario Maker. Super Mario. Super Maker. Mario Maker. Game by Nintendo, shockingly. I know, weird. Mm hmm. It's out on Wii U right now. It's 60 bucks. It is uh, apparently just a whole bunch of fun. It's really good. Is it really, really good? Yeah, I like is it, it. Is it like top tier good? I think so. Wow. Tell me about Super Mario Maker. 
Nick, we'll let you start this one. All right, so I guess I'll do that then. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be the guy that's the opposite of Mathis then. I think it's a great premise. I think it's a flawed execution. I think they missed a lot of things that could have made this really elevate into a higher strata of uh, introducing people to the concept of level design using the framework of Mario, which is something that we are generally very nostalgic for. What I mean specifically is this is a level editor you're paying $60 for. As you start it up, you're given just a very small amount of tools, and generally that's fine, I think, for people that are starting up on this thing. They want to kind of experience a small grouping as they are provided them. Uh, you have to essentially place a whole bunch of blocks, though, to unlock more. So if you're somebody who wants to try to get to the greater elements of Mario, you've got to spend a bunch of time discovering this metagame of like how Nintendo wants you to get to the rest of the stuff which since I paid $60, I'd really like to just have a button that says unlock all because I don't need to be spoon-fed it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, the real problem I have, though, is twofold. One of them is it's very hard to discover the exact type of levels that you want to play. If you've got a group of friends, it's maybe a little bit tricky to find their stuff over other people's stuff. Uh, the other thing is there's a lot of stuff missing in my preferences. There is not an ability to make worlds, you can make a sequence of four levels in a row, but you can't make like an overworld map and then put a bunch of levels in. Uh, there's also a lot of items and enemies and combinations that you, I think, should be able to do if you really want to create a proper Mario experience. Things like uh, secret exits, the keys and locks are just not there. Uh, there's no references at all to Super Mario 2 uh, or Mario Land for that. Uh, well, they like direction. to pretend that didn't exist, right? Yeah, well, it's it's kind of a different genre, in mm. essence, compared to the other Mario games. But since they have, you know, they pay lip service to things like the Wii Fit Balance Board and Rob the Robot in costumes, why not Mario 2, right? I mean, there's well, a do. lot of you stuff. You do, though. You have the Shy Guy costume from Mario 2, and when you when okay. you win the level as him, it gives you the little victory song from Mario but 2. You can't make, like, a waterfall with logs coming down. You can make sort of well, a... Yeah. You can't make a, you can't make a Mario that, 2. But, well, Mario well, 2 is, is admittedly very different gameplay. It's kind of an open world game, which I think a lot of people would love to be able to use mm -hmm. the framework of what they've given you to create stuff without a timer and just have a bunch of different exits and find your own way through and just make a platform instead of make individual Mario levels. Mm. Now, if this game was 20 bucks, or if it was, you know, presented a little differently, and it wasn't so much oriented towards, like, this is our official chance at giving people an opportunity to figure out level design, I think I would be able to get behind it a little bit more, but the way that they marketed it makes me kind of just wish it was more of a platform instead of just a kind of a one-off affair. Anything I say resonate with you guys? So, well, I'll say that, uh, okay, first of all, own a Wii U don't have Super Mario Maker, so I think I'm going to change right. that pretty soon. But I've seen plenty of it on Twitch, and I think that's, you know, just as suitable for drawing an opinion of it. It's, uh, it's kind of just what I expected it to be from Nintendo. Mm -hmm. I think they recognize that they've got a property that could benefit from the ongoing craze of we want to make our own stuff with your game. Yeah. And that... They still claim it on YouTube, though, but that's fine. Well, yeah, they're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with Nintendo, I, I can't look at Nintendo and think to myself, like, they're gonna make a Minecraft Mario. Like, they're not gonna do that. They're gonna make it uh, a handheld... They're not a handheld, like literally a handheld, but I'm talking about they're going to hold your hand through a lot of the experience because this is a game probably designed to allow, you know, six or seven year olds to maybe pick it up and try to figure it out as they go. Right. So there should be an unlock all button. I wish that existed. That that would be really helpful. I agree really on helpful. that. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's being Mario about the build it phase of gaming. I can't figure out a better way to explain that because it really is just the way that Nintendo is going to approach this and say, we, we have, here's your tools, here's the space we've given you to play with, and that's going to be it. And yep. we're, we're going to keep the reins here for yeah. as long as possible, but you can you that's, can play with these little toys for a little that's while. That's right. And yeah. it, it is consistent with the Nintendo narrative in that way. I feel like they have given you ample opportunities to have fun, but mm. it is sort of within their own box of what they think you should be allowed to do. And I just really like breaking stuff in general. I think that's the most fun. Mm. And if you're going to open it up to making levels, you know, why not let players have fun the way they want to have fun? That being said, I don't think it's bad. And I think the approach and the UI, for the most part, are very well done. 
Uh, it's got a charming element to it, and they've sort of harkened back to, like, Mario Paint style, uh, even down to the fact that there's a hidden mini game of doing the fly swatter coffee time thing for Mario Paint, which I found by accident, mm. and it was kind of delightful. Uh, then I had to figure out how I triggered it because it wasn't then unlocked for me to play whenever, so I had to keep placing question mark blocks and moving them around. But it's nice that they have little details like that. If I'm enti entirely abandoning my cynicism, though, I gotta say, like, this is pretty great. Like, it it's been awesome to see Mario games that were made by people that are just being completely yeah. absurd. And, you know, of course there's gonna be a thousand Bashi-esque stages made in the oh, first yeah. three days, and that was... That was fun for a little while, but now I'm seeing a lot of levels that have a lot of heart put into them. People have been spending days since the game came out just developing stages that they have had their hearts set on. And this is going to help a lot of people out in learning how to make stages. Even though this is a very limited tool set, it's still... It's a good introduction. Yeah, it's, it's a great intro, especially for younger kids who are getting into Mario like this. And seeing that it's something that a lot of their friends are playing, too, because they are all interested in these games that allow you to just kind of freely create and explore your own ideas. So it's pretty terrific that they're doing this because it's just encouraging that sort of creativity for people. I like uh, one of the, I definitely agree with Nick where like Nintendo's online bullshit of like trying to find your friends is impossible. I wish they mm. would just like have a search bar and be like search for your friend and just find your friends it's so you too follow dangerous, them. though, man. It's too, yeah. We don't want like, to have... They're, they're convoluted, like... Fake names associated with people. 16-digit, like, a passcode. Like, I hate mm. that. It's so... It's, it's, it's pervasive through all of Nintendo's online formats for all of their games. It's really annoying, and it's stupid. Mm. Um, but, like, one of the things I really love about the game is, like, for, for things like Little Big Planet, I've always wanted to make levels. I always wanted to, be, like, play with it, but I never found it fun yeah. or, like, enjoyable, and I don't know why... But with Mario Maker, yeah, I mean, but just like maybe too much or just they have like tons of tools in Little Big Planet. Mario Maker is just the distilled down nuggets. And it's yeah. but like actually like dragging and dropping and like making the levels is fun. And whether it just be like the silly goofy noises or like the fun feedback of just watching a Goomba grow because you threw a mushroom on right. him, like and just having like a cat paw come like on the TV to represent your hand, like that. Those little things make it whimsical and fun for me to make a level and I spend hours now just because it's I enjoy making a level and then just playing through them very seamlessly of like making a level hitting play testing it knowing what needs to be this, fixed hit edit yes. very easy the tablet controller this is the best argument that I've seen so far for its yeah. use it is yeah, absolutely. almost inextricably tied to this concept and if you had to do this by hand it would be a lot more tedious which is another huge problem I have with I guess little big planet which now that I kind of vocalize it makes sense like using the controller yeah. to build a level is it's a imprecise. bitch well, I, it's two but, things. It's not only is it imprecise, you're using an analog stick, and there's not necessarily a grid either, although there can be. In this, you're looking at a 2D side-scrolling game, which has yep. a grid. Yep. You can't not place things on the lines. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot less variables that way. Yeah, I think you, uh, I think you just kind of hit the nail on the head of why this is going to work and why it does have a mass appeal, because almost every game now has a level editor, at least when it makes sense to do so. And you rarely see them blossom. Like, I, I'm thinking about Volume, for example, as a very recent example of a game that is kind of built around the idea of having a level editor that will elongate the uh, length of the game because the community aspect, you know, there's always new stuff to play. But if you don't make a level editor that's fun itself to use, then that's not going to go anywhere. And it's, it's probably not the first time this has happened, but this is a level editor that is a game. It's fun to just play the editing mode of Super Mario Maker because that is a focal point of it, is that that they wanted to make it a fun thing for people to do. The game is built around the community aspect. I mean, they have what I love is that it, like you said it's intrinsic to the game itself. You have modes, all most of the main modes are just pulling random levels from the community to create right. this string to get to a castle which is then a player made castle that you have to go through. And this easy, medium and hard which I don't understand how they determine how if your level which is I'm assume my only guess is it it just is determined by how many times people have died on your level yeah, maybe, maybe that will determine whether it's an expert a normal or an easy level it might also be how far you've got the end point dragged away from the beginning it's, or yeah, some it variable be. about how many enemies or something but I love that I can play like Mario 100 you get 100 lives to go through these 8 16 or whatever levels depending on the difficulty you pick from and it just pulls levels out of the community so you kind of have this endless 
Mario thing to play all the time. And if a game level's too hard, you can skip it. It's super easy. You're just like, I'm losing too many lives. I want to be able to beat it. Because if you beat the Mario 100, you unlock a special skin that you can put onto your character, mm -hmm. which is super the fun. And there's mushroom, yeah. And there's yeah. like a million of them, too. There's yeah. like over 120 or something like that it's skins. all the amiibos, man. It's a plus, ton. Plus others. <laughs> I'm glad that they didn't just make it only by amiibo that you can oh, unlock yeah. it. Yeah. Because I'll never I, open these fuckers. It'll never happen. Yeah. I, I feel like it's a little bit of a missed opportunity in this as well, because I think they could have used this as a great platform to teach level design by making levels that have chunks missing that you have to play through by adding the missing parts yourself. Ooh. So they could use that as ways to sort of teach what would be a best practice in the situation to make a fun situation that maybe pass that on to somebody else to then iterate upon. Mm. So I, I feel like there's a lot of that kind of thing. That's if just, you do hate almost, a level, though, they do allow you to immediately deconstruct a level you've played if you want to. Right. I think it so saves just, everything you played actually to the so level. So you can just play like yeah, pop open level, you just play like this level sucks. You can just immediately play like it would be better if it was like this and you can do that. But like you said, it's not presented in that way. I wish Nintendo that I'd like that he got that idea of just here's an incomplete level, make it completable in any way you see fit. Well and maybe they could give you limited resources or something. You've got this many platforms, this many blocks, and then figure out a creative way to be able to distribute those through the missing elements. That'd be and cool. still be I able to get that. to the goal. Um, and that would then teach people how to do things in a fun way on the way there. Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. The other thing that I thought was really kind of erroneous, and I sort of hit on this earlier, is the fact that Nintendo from the beginning of Mario has been aware of level design is basically most effective when you can iterate upon one theme in small groups. Uh, meaning when you get, say, a group of one through four levels, they might have... This is a group of platforms all moving in different ways. Then you add the intercepts with the, the up and down moving Koopa Troopas. And then you add some fireballs into the mix. And then you've got all kinds of power-ups. And then by the end, it's very complicated. Yeah. With this, all you've ever got is one level to work with, which means that all of your themes can only begin and end within that level. If you were to be able to create a small overworld, at least you could then kind of expand on a theme and it, it could have a little bit more in terms of legs that way it also kind of renders one-ups meaningless to only have one level to ever work with granted they've made situations where they can work in the, the ones you mentioned the, the 100 Mario challenge uh, but since the difficulties vary so much between levels you don't know when a one-up is going to be completely pointless I mean you could run into levels that play themselves and I have already oh, you God, those, yeah. touch them yeah. Or you could run into a level that is nearly impossible to complete unless you know about this one secret block that's hidden somewhere that only the person who made it would know about. So yeah. there's a lot yeah. left up to chance there, and it doesn't really elaborate or allow people to elaborate, elaborate upon their own really interesting concepts. Instead, you just get very small modular elements, which can be fun, but I feel like they don't ascend to that next tier that I was hoping that we could hit with this. Agreed. Ryan, thoughts? I own two copies of Super Mario Maker, but I haven't played it yet. And honestly, I sort of don't feel motivated to because... At, NHL 16 at... is coming out? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but at the risk of, of kind of coming across a little bit more Ooh, conceited than it. intended. Don't say it. It's more like I have, I have a creative outlook or outlet already with programming. So I'm kind of like, I could spend like three hours making a Mario Maker level. It would probably be fun. Or I could I could program, and that's not is... conceited at all. That's fine. That's just how you want to choose yeah. to spend your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, it's like yeah, I've kind of got like a Mario Maker. The the needs, if this was The Sims, the needs that Mario Maker would fulfill for me are already being fulfilled from something that I find more constructive. So I'm that probably sounds... not going to play Mario Maker for some time. I like that Sims comparison. It makes it so people <laughs> can't rip on you for it. Basically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mario Maker is out now. Decide for yourself if you want to check it out. We are all, uh, I think we're pretty pleased with it in a nutshell. Yeah. It's uh, out, uh, out across all countries and nations. Australia got it two days later. That's just ridiculous. Uh -huh. Stupid. Well, it's Australia. not two years later like usual. That's true. Yeah, at least there's that. <laughs> Uh, and that's it for our content today. We're going to be jumping now into everybody's favorite segment. It's Ask Roundtable. Woo! Oh, man. Woo! You know, I, I told you guys last time I was going to have, like, some music to go there. Yeah? There's not. Oh. You're a lying son of a bitch. <laughs> One of those things, Ask Roundtable to me, is like a, an old school, like, early 90s fake rap. Like, mm -hmm. boom, chicka, 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 and then, like, record scratch, and then, like, Ask Roundtable. 
esque round table. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like that. Straight out of the nineties, man. Exactly. Like... I can't stop writing music for this podcast. Just like some, some non-threatening. <laughs> oh, you know what? This is program. this is not even the right goddamn question. Hold on, that's the one from Brian last time. I didn't save my damn. Uh, I didn't save my my images, man. This is ridiculous. Oh no. Did I save two files too? God damn. Every every second that goes by without you uh fixing this, mm -hmm. you got you're gonna have some problems. Oh, you save. know what it is? I saved it as a JPEG. Oh, that's why I fucked it up. Alright, well <laughs> here it is. Edit anyway. incoming. <laughs> you have made successful careers in a segment of media development that could be loosely categorized as semi professional. Nobody can even see what you're doing with your camera right now, man. We're all Come white man. squares. It's a grape or a Freaking pee in the dark right now. Put it another way, you, you develop and produce your own be the content. XCOM leader. <laughs> <laughs> no one can see you. My we'll question is: <laughs> If you had the opportunity to jump to a more traditional broadcasting field, e.g., radio, sports, or television, later in life, would you seriously consider it? Thank you, Alex, for that question. So, boiled down to brass tacks, we've all uh, etched out a niche here in the internet world, but if given the opportunity to jump to radio or television, would you do it? Let's start no. with Mathis. No. No. Explain why. Um, I don't know, man. I like being able to control my own content and not have to really answer to anybody and kind of do what I think is best for my channel or what I want to do because it's fun. Having that kind of liberty taken away from me is something I don't think I'd really want to do. That and, like, I don't even want to, like, the money aspect isn't even that big of a deal for me, one way or another. I just don't think, like, with television in, in particular, you there's so many people you have to answer to and you have to make it sure it's their vision or whatever. With YouTube, it's me, only me, and I do what I think is best, and I've had success with it so far, and I don't think I'd ever really leap over to that. I, I don't think I would enjoy losing that. Fair. Ryan? Yeah, you know, I agree with Mathis. I mean, one of the great things about the internet now is that it's kind of like been a great equalizer for broadcasting. Like the reason that radio and television, I feel, are more seen as more established careers right now is because they've been around forever. But the only reason they've been around forever in that kind of like hierarchical structure is because it costs like a trillion dollars to make a, a radio tower. Mm. <laughs> like, it's not like, it, you know, there's been stuff like pirate radio and stuff like that, but nobody was building like a radio tower in their backyard and broadcasting to like, you know, all of London or something like everybody that. Everybody can so, stream on Twitch, but not everybody can construct a radio tower and broadcast on an FM signal. Exactly. Mm. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I think it's better to have control over yourself. Like, like Matt is saying, you know, you can work 15 hours one day you can work zero hours the next day if you want to you can travel whenever you want as long as you make up for those hours in the meantime you know you, you you're also in a job where like if you work as like a radio broadcaster or a television broadcaster your income is not necessarily dependent on how much you work you might be on salary and typically salaries in, in broadcasting unless you're like a, a tv star are not that high you know so, ryan seacrest yeah, if you're Ryan Seacrest, you're set, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, you might end up uh, working like 40 or 50 hours a week doing like a radio morning show or something like that and getting paid the same. Whereas, you know, with what we do, we kind of have control over our output and that gives us a little bit of control over our income as well. So and that, that's a lot of freedom, honestly. And I think we're, we're kind of coming to the point where it's going in the other direction. Like in 2012, yeah. people were like, yeah, it would be yeah. awesome if like, you know, why don't you quit YouTube and get a job in radio? And I'm like, radio doesn't doesn't pay that well. <laughs> and also, uh, my only skill for radio is that I have a deep voice. It's not like I, there's a lot. I don't want to. And you got sweet '90s references, man. Mm -hmm. That's true. Damn, like mad though. You're I don't want to denigrate what DJs do. You know, they they have their own unique set of skills that <laughs> yeah, I don't oh, dude, possess. do it. You can. It's fine. Fuck DJs. <laughs> but uh, they, you know, it's it's going in the other direction. People are leaving established media roles. And they're they're making YouTube channels and Twitch channels because they're seeing the yeah. potential. And you know, being your own boss is awesome. And you know, it's nice to have that advertising money coming straight to you instead of going to like the radio station owner and then filtering down through, you know, fifty employees because the overhead of the radio station is so high and stuff like that. So, well, you, I mean, we still kind of have that with YouTube taking a, ch a huge chunk of what we make. Yeah, but there's a difference between like that and like a, having a building. 
Like, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, like a true. radio station For building, and then you pay yeah. licensing fees to, like, the, Okay, yeah, yeah. The, you pay royalties and stuff like that. Also, like, working in television, you're selling somebody else. And, like, in radio, you're selling somebody else. Whereas for YouTube, they're usually there for you and the game, but a lot for your individual personality as well. So, mm -hmm. like, in desperate times, maybe. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. But uh, I, I, no plans, really. They'd have to pay me a lot more than I'm worth. Let's put it that way. <laughs> mm. <laughs> as far you, as I go, uh, really the only thing that I would say to add upon that, I mean, I was totally on board with what Ryan was saying about that things are kind of going in the other direction. If I was to seek anything more traditional, it wouldn't be really any of those avenues particularly. I'd probably just do writing. Um, I've always mm. been interested in writing, and I've always been pretty good at it. So I think that's the one place where I think I could still fit in. I'm not really chasing, like, visibility. I don't really want to be a huge celebrity. I'm just happy playing games and talking about them and expressing my opinions. And none of those things in radio or TV would really get me to that point. If anything, it would just get me further away from it. So really, writing is the only other option that well, I could see. But all the places where writing is happening are all going to YouTube now. So <laughs> I think I already found the right spot. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like the great thing about YouTube, right? Like you, like in traditional media, you wouldn't be able to just be like voice your opinion and stuff about right. video games. In that shift of the other direction, you can do that. And I also couldn't use my platform to decide that one night I'm going to drink a bunch of beer and beat 12 bosses and Titan Souls with my feet. <laughs> right? I mean, so that's like, I have a lot of versatility with what I'm doing right now, and I'm pretty happy about it. I yeah. don't see how it would be an upgrade in any way to go the other way. That's a great point, honestly. <laughs> like, you kind of just nailed it with the uh, drink 12 beers and play Titan Souls <laughs> with my feet. I can't do that on ESPN, man. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, the limitation. Then maybe if they're getting very progressive in the future, but I doubt they're it. They're starting to stream Dota. You know, anything could happen at this point. It's true. I mean, the other thing is that, like... It's a Dota. The idea is that, like, if you take a more traditional job, you have more job security, but I don't think, like, being in broadcasting gives you any more nope. No, you security. have way less job security having a job with, like, a major market than you do with anything we do. Yeah, like, if you're, like, a newscaster awesome. and they just fire you... They it's don't not. have to give you a severance <laughs> package or anything. You they gotta move, fucking, right? Go they, away. If, I make, yeah. if I make any of the jokes I make on my channel on in broadcasting, I'd be fired in a day. Oh yeah. The one it argument would be you don't have to deal with Google, but like it could be the same situation with a different boss. I'm more yeah. than happy to deal with Google. I seriously, I mean, we complain about it, but not having anyone to talk to is a lot more than not better than having terrible people to talk to. Yeah, maybe. Depending on, well, unless you end up in the wrong element of, like, someone did something to you you had no control over, and then you have no mm. recourse. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's always suck. extremes either way, too. Yeah, of course. That, that, uh, that is, unfortunately, a there's lot more prevalent than it should be. Bad elements in every job, for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. So, I want to talk about radio for a second, because I want to dispel the myth of radio. Radio is... <laughs> the myth of radio. Radio sucks ass, man. It's fun. It's fun when you're on the air. But then everything else is just kind of crappy. Unless you really like music, in which case be a music director at a radio station. Your life will be awesome because you'll get all kinds of music. Um, all right, so we were talking about this a little bit before the show as well. Guess how much radio disc jockeys make in your head right now. Just guess. $10 an hour. Just think about like an afternoon shift, like 3 to 6, afternoon drive at, at the number one radio station in your area. Just think about that. Think about that number. If you have like a reasonable estimation of like ten dollars an hour, like Nick said, you're probably in the ballpark. That that's not a lie. The top afternoon DJs may be making like twelve to fifteen bucks an hour in your area. More than that as a waiter at unless, the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, unless you are in L.A., Chicago, or New York, you're not making shit on radio. Like those people. They're doing it because they love radio and they love being involved with radio and they like to do the events and stuff that are part of it. But when you're when you're working at a radio station too, you're working as you're not just a DJ. You're working as like the promotions director or the music director or the sponsorships director or something like that. You are doing a different job and being a DJ is part of that job and it's a smaller part of that job. You're working like 40 to 60 hours a week behind the scenes. You're doing all the nasty stuff that nobody wants to do. Like even if you're a program director for example, which is kind of a higher job in the hierarchy of radio and it's it's different everywhere. It's probably different from where I was. 
you have a job that entails you scheduling out everything. You have to, uh, you know, weed through the bull crap. It's just a job just like anything else is. Any other job is, is comparable to a radio position because you're doing all that crap anyway. And then there's a glamorous part of it where you are on the air for maybe six minutes out of an hour. By the yeah. way, <laughs> if you're getting yeah. an idea yeah. of being like a pseudo celebrity by being a radio station disc jockey, people are l like more likely not to hear you in the span of their drive than they are to hear your voice going on the air. Right. What about even uh, is that still as far as money is concerned, morning show guys? Morning show people should be making a lot, but according to Ryan, it's also not even really like. Well, I mean, okay, you're one example in a field of thousands, but yes. still. I'm I'm saying seriously, L.A., Chicago, New York, and then there's like yeah. a few other markets that are comparable to those areas. You've got like those people, and those are the highlights of radio, and they're the ones making a good amount of money. There's even disc jockeys in my former area, like in Utah, that were part of a morning show that was very popular. That was probably paying them each, you know, just over six figure salaries, and that's still uh, well. Think about it this way, too. Think about the NBA. And think about how in the NBA there are about you know 20 to 25 players that are superstars that are making tremendous amounts of money. Right. That makes sense. But then think about the players in the NBA that are just sort of you know uh, regular to bench-level players that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're still the elite class. They're still good enough to play in the NBA but they're not really making that much money out of it. And that disparity is scaled down and then equalized yeah. in radio. So you have maybe a dozen people in radio that are making just ass loads of money. And then you've got all the other professionals that are doing the morning shows that are making good amounts of money. And then everyone else is making basically minimum wage for wow. a job that is not even that glamorous. That's crazy, man, hearing that and just being like, I made more than that as a waiter. Yeah, you probably and you didn't did. you have to spend your weekends doing, like, uh, remotes from, like, a furniture store having a tent sale. That paid, right, like, right, right. $500 <laughs> to do that. Seriously, like, that's the asking price. For an afternoon DJ, you get 500 bucks for going over there for three hours and promoting some fucking car dealership. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's radio for you. But I mean, I think I may I maybe answered the question for you in, in that. <laughs> so my no, answer was I, no before. It's extra no now. Fuck no, no. Which is I not to shit on people in radio because there are people who like love it and yeah. do it for the love of it. But. And I I was I loved being on the radio when I was on the radio. It was a lot of fun. But if you're looking at radio like it's some kind of glamour job that puts you in the spotlight and gets you all kinds of fame and glory. That is not the way you want to go, especially now because it's going to die. Radio's going to die. It will. There's nothing it brings to the table that other forms of media aren't bringing to the table. And we're going to have replacements for it in like 30 years. That's just, it has to happen. It's yeah, the, the cycle of technological just life. Turn off your face cam and stream something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People are already removing radio from their cars, which is you know, like the staple of radio at the moment. I mean, even as a, like a very small example, sure. But I know I, there, I know there are people out there who listen to like our podcast while they're driving, mm -hmm. for instance. I mean, for Dan Giesling does it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Self-aware podcast right now. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's my answer to the question is, no, I am uh, very happy. I, I almost avoided going the route you're recommending here to pursue this stuff. Yeah, because I felt it was better suited to what I wanted to do creatively, and it's working so far. So I hopefully we'll be able to keep that up. Uh, now, that being said, you yeah. know, I, I wonder if this question is kind of pitched because uh, you know, Pro Jared was on that Nickelodeon show recently, and PewDiePie yeah. is doing something with TMZ in Hollywood. If the right offer came along that allowed you to do both, right? Yeah, consecutively. Probably oh, not yeah. radio because nobody's going to pay us to be on radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This hot new indie game came out this week on <laughs> this is Northern Line on Virgin Radio Vancouver, right? Like that's not gonna happen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, possibly. You always you keep an open mind about that sort of stuff. But as a full time gig, I'd rather not. Is my th inclination right now. Yeah. Well. Yeah, uh, it's just so much better. Our lives are great. 
That's, <laughs> that's what we want to say. I mean, we really have no very little room to complain with our jobs. No, not at all. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much, Alex, for that question. If you want to send in a question to Ask Roundtable, that is roundtableyt at gmail.com. It's down in the description as well if you want to see it there. Roundtable Alex, at gmail.com. if you're looking to hire us for a movie, and that was why you asked. Oh, yeah, yeah. If that was a filter question, then I'm totally on board for it. <laughs> I promise. Oh, my goodness. As long as you pay me more than I'm worth, I'm I'm in. (laughs) Uh, That should bring us to Nick's Weird Games, right? I I think think so, so. yeah. All right, let's do it. I got a game all picked down for you guys. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yeah, well, Nick's over there talking about, uh, or uh, grabbing, I should say, a Nick's Weird Game. Talking about it. I want, uh, ooh, you know what? The Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) I was going to say, we got to pull something from the Rock Band 4 track list. You could, couldn't have been short skirt, long jacket, which just pivots into it yeah, so nicely. Yeah, you know what? Go for it. You can, you can have this one. All right. I want a game from the PS2 era made by a Japanese developer who no longer exists. <laughs> I want a game that was published by Atlas and made by Nikalis and probably sucks. <laughs> I want a game with a, with a short story and a long name with a colon followed by a superlative. <laughs> oh, man. A plus. Dude, that's, that's great. That's a competitor for best Nick's Weird Game theme song. Thank you. I only right. caught the end, but it sounded pretty good. Well, do we I don't have a colon or a superlative for you. So then I, I have that's no okay. idea what it is at Hit this me. point. Yeah. Let's do it. So today's game uh, is a PS2 game again. It's not an Atlas game because I know how much you hate those. I still have. <laughs> it's like you heard more. the song. <laughs> uh, oh, it's a I Natsume actually... game, right? Yeah. No, this one is developed by Core Design. I don't know if you guys know who that is. No, it's published by IDOS Interactive. Okay. Came out. Uh... <laughs> I think I killed Ryan. <laughs> is it Tomb Raider? Is it no. Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness? <laughs> no. Yeah, it came out for Windows in 2001 and PlayStation 2 in uh, 2001 as well. Is a difference of about two weeks. It is a action-based, action-adventure single-player game with multiplayer as well, but it is not required. All right. From the creators of Tomb Raider 1 and 2. There you go. <laughs> hey. And this is the back of the box blurb. Due to severe overpopulation, Earth's surface is covered with towering megacities. A civilization... Oh, okay. As civilization climbs high into the wait, sky... Wait, 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 varies... what, what was that due to? Due to severe overpopulation. Oh, okay. What I, 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 I misheard you. Okay, sorry, yeah, no, oh. go for it. As due civilization... to the watermelon shortage, it's raining today. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> civilization climbs high into the sky and buries uh, beneath it uh, a wretched underworld occupied by criminals, the deranged, and the deformed. Now, amidst reports of violence and atrocity in lower levels, a technical repair team has gone missing. So we're going to lead four specialists into uh, innovative squad-based play in an abyss of vast caverns, snake-like tunnels, and luring dead ends. There's 11 chilling ba- uh, mission-based levels that will test your exploration, puzzle-solving, and survival skills. There Can are morphing repeat, enemies. Was, did they say yeah. alluring dead ends? Luring. Oh! Mm-hmm. They lure you into the dead I've ends. I've never heard that. Uh, <laughs> that would be a great adjective for it, right? Lure, alluring dead ends. <laughs> <laughs> the shiny treasure at the end. Um, morphing enemies challenge you constantly, mutating as quickly as you learn how to destroy them. And you can descend into the darkness alone or uh, with four others in cooperative multiplayer. Any guesses, folks? No. Is it Deus Ex? No. Okay. Invisible War. No, it's not like you will climb the Statue of Liberty. To I swear to God I say this every Dentum. time, but there's like... The the one thing that is standing out is the fact that it's underground. But there's yes. always that one element that makes me think I know this game, but I You want to totally say it's Red know. Faction. It's not Red Faction. I kind of did want to say it was Red yeah. Faction, actually, yeah. That's a first-person shooter anyway, but that's that's for another day. Now, not for another day. Mm. Uh, what else can I give you? The first... What's it rated? Oh, it's rated T for Teen. Okay. Uh, reasons of Blood and Gore and Violence. Core Interactive? Core design. Core design. So I can make it easier for you to Google the name. <laughs> I'm just going to cheat because I'm curious. I cheated already, yeah. Yeah, I got nothing. Oh, All right. what the? It's a, wait, no. Today's that's game not. is called Project Eden. Oh, God. I should have known that one. I, I saw that one all the time. This I mean, was I recognize like the cover rare, a little actually. bit, but. No, I remember this one because I would always want to rent it because my mom wouldn't let me. 
Because of the T for teen. Because of the T for teen, yeah. I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't mature enough yet. She used to impose these super heavy restrictions on the teen games, man. Like she would right. sometimes let us get the teen games, but only if the you know the breakdown was was not too bad. So what no. are the uh, what are the details on this one for the teen rating? Well, I just want to mention too that it was ranked as the eighty seventh best PS two game by IGN. So oh, that's a good yeah, stat. They gave it a nine out of ten. Nine wow. out of ten. But all the other review scores were like in the seventies. So I'm not sure what happened with IGN. They got really that's into impressive. It. Not uh, enough, again the nine out of ten. The adjectives here, the uh, descriptors were blood and gore and violence. Is why it was. Okay, I great. think the blood and gore. <laughs> just the f- the fact that it had to the list gore that. Itself. Yep. Made it so I couldn't play it. I remember seeing this one on the shelves all the time, though. Project this doesn't look too bad for like a 2001 era game. Yeah, 2001 Dead Space, maybe. Yeah, yeah. kind of. It's weird. Oh man. Well, oh, the first person mode. Oh geez. That's, that's another like four player co-op. Four player yeah. co-op, really. So. That's so another point for Nick then. Yep. Racking them up, guys. Yeah, like you have to pick well. your games. <laughs> Let us, let us know if you got Nick's weird game this time. We want to hear that on Twitter, and uh, then hopefully stop spoiling it for everybody that hasn't heard the episode yet. Like some I do think that one me. was probably the the easiest. Yeah, I, I know that game. So I've that, seen that cover. Yeah, that alone is. I got Rule of Rose. I got Rule of Rose. We remember. The only We're still giving you credit for that. That's the one yeah. point we've got for the team. Look. I am actually making an effort to try and find easier games because I know that some of these are off the damn deep end. Yeah. I hear you. So I'll keep going. You maybe have to direction. throw us a bone next time and just see if yeah. we're even paying attention. No, I will. I'll do that. Throw us a fucking uh, Mega Man at some point. I'm not going to do a Mega Man. <laughs> As a I've robot. Got other plans. <laughs> Tony, a cyborg robot from 20XX. In the seventh iteration of this popular franchise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is, it, All right. is it NHL 2001? Yeah, there you go. We could actually try to see which NHL game it is, just based on the information. If you showed us the cover, I would, uh, I'd, I'd know. <laughs> yeah. If you showed us the year, I would know the year. <laughs> well, that is going to be it for this episode of Roundtable. Thank you very much to our uh, Patreon supporters on Patreon.com/slash/Roundtable. Above that twenty dollars tier includes Max Pillen, Alexander Spillman, Christopher Flag, Positron, Jeff Rush, General Crunk, Jonathan Graham, Christopher Farmer. Air Force Balls, David Bradley, Matt, Julian Avilsgaard, Caspian Crawdad, Kevin Berkland, Casey, Noel Ref, Meteor Crates, uh, Simph, Johannes Goldon, Matthew Monahan, Zur, Jonathan Bloodworth, Kevin Ran Out of Ideas, Walker. I love that. He's still changing <laughs> yeah. it. Connor Littlewood, Samurfet, Logan Ray, Justin, Brizzlebrip, and Ignacio0891. Thank you very much for your support, and uh, Mathis has got the update for those of you in getting involved in the monthly game session as well. Yep, I've already heard back from a couple of them, which is great. They're going to be there. But mm-hmm. uh, next Tuesday is when we do our stream. We're going to do some Rocket League community stuff. Um, I've already sent out a message to all $75 tier patrons, mm-hmm. so check your patron mailbox and uh, get back to me to let me know if you're going to be there or not. And if you are going to be there, I'll be sure to send you a message to let you guys know how to get into the game. So that'll be on uh, next Tuesday, Tuesday the 22nd. Yep. When we play. The next episode will be on the 2nd of October. Oh my god, September's already almost over. 2nd of October, that's when uh, Battle for Zendikar comes out. Nice. We'll talk about it. The whole show, I'm sure. Uh, Sweet. Thank you, for, thank you very much for watching. Follow at RoundtablePC on Twitter. You can again email roundtableyt at gmail.com with your Ask Roundtable questions or just to email us for whatever the hell you want to talk about because I'm okay with that. That's an email inbox. I'm happy to be filled with spam honestly just do it uh follow twitch.tv slash roundtable podcast to be notified when we go live on twitch and roundtable p or uh, roundtable podcast.reddit.com i believe for the subreddit to do episode discussion and that's it thanks for watching hey everybody bye. Bye. yeah bye Woo-hoo, we all did it.